Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions that you have related to electrical and life safety. With the easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Now today, I'm gonna to be talking about some of the allowable sprinkler omissions in an NFPA 13D sprinkler system. Now, if we go into NFPA link, we see that I have NFPA 13D here favorited on my main page. And we see that NFPA 13D is the standard for the installation of sprinkler systems in one and two family dwellings and manufactured homes. So let's go ahead and go into NFPA 13D. And I want to look for some of the allowable omissions for sprinkler systems. So I'm going to go into chapter eight, which is sprinkler position and location. I'm going to go to 8.3, which is location of sprinklers. Now we see sprinklers shall be installed in all areas except where the omission is permitted by 832 through 837. So NFPA 13D is trying to provide the design and installation of a sprinkler system in homes that is both cost effective and provides life safety to the occupants. We wanna be able to prevent flashover and give occupants of a home enough time to escape the building before flashover occurs. Now, in order to do that with being cost effective, the technical committee looks at other different areas that we can not necessarily install sprinklers because either we see that fires are relatively rare in those spaces, or if a fire occurs in that space, statistics show that it, uh, it does not lead to the, the loss of, of life in a building where that fire were to occur. So that's where a lot of these spaces are allowed to omit sprinklers. And the first one here is small bathroom. So bathroom less than 55 square feet or 5.1 square meters is not required to have a sprinkler in it because we've got relatively low uh, combustible loading in those spaces. And again, relatively low chances of a fire to occur. Next is sprinklers aren't required in closed closets or linen closets as long as they're less than 24 square feet or 2.2 square meters and they're surfaced with a non-combustible limited combustible material. Again, that is being provided because these are relatively small spaces, the fires aren't that large, and it, the cost to install a sprinkler in one of these small spaces is actually relatively high because they're so small and there's typically a lot of them in a building. So again, looking at that cost benefit analysis, the statistics don't show that that fires are that common in these spaces and don't lead to death within the building. So we are allowed to omit them from those spaces. Next is going to be garages or open attached porches and balconies and carports. And that's because Again, fires in those areas don't lead to death in a home. And typically those spaces would require some sort of freeze protection in areas that are cold climates because they're not typically heated. So that it significantly increases the cost to install sprinklers in those spaces. So we're allowed to omit those in those spaces as well in order to keep that cost down. Next is gonna be in uh, attics. We're not required to have sprinkler protection in an attic. The, the only thing is if there were fuel fired equipment located in that attic and it's located beneath an occupied area of a dwelling unit, then we would need to have some sort of sprinkler protection in that area. And then next is gonna be unheated enclosures at the entrance and exits of a building. We're not required to put sprinklers in those unheated areas as long as the dwelling unit has at least another entrance or an exit. Again looking at the fact that the cost to install some sort of freeze protection on those systems is, is relatively high. And as long as the occupants have another exit, um, it's not required in those spaces. Sprinklers aren't required in ceiling pockets that meet the following the requirements in 837. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is sprinklers aren't required in closets, in garages or exterior closets, regardless of the size. Um, and this is important, it provided here that they there's no unprotected penetrations directly into the dwelling unit. We aren't required to have sprinkler protection there because again, we're not heated, so we, we would have had to provide some sort of uh, freeze protection. And the, so the cost would be significantly high. If we don't have a way for the fire to spread into the home, we see that there's a relatively low chance of loss of life if a fire were to start in that sort of space. So not required in any sort of exterior closets or closets within a garage or anything like that. 
So I hope that provided some insight on some of the allowable sprinkler omissions for an NFPA 13D sprinkler system. For more information on how NFPA Link gives you the knowledge that you need to get the job done right, go ahead and visit nfpa.org link.